Okay, so I've added the GitHub link in the description. So from there, you, you need to clone the repo, particular repo, and uh, inside that repository, we have the data set already. So you can clone it. Or you can directly install that, like download the data set from that particular part. You know, the name of the directory is applications of ML and accident predictive prediction. I hope I'm audible, right? Yes, yes, yes. Hello, um, is the screen visible? Yes. Good. So let's start then. I think if uh, all of you have downloaded the data set, just download the data set, OK? Because that is important. Uh, and also, one more thing, I'll ask you very soon. Take your time, just download the data set. Or clone the report afterwards, you can start. This data set, sorry, can we send it again? I joined a bit late. Yep, sure. I'll send it. Okay, so let's start then talking about machine learning. Today's event is application of machine learning in predicting the accident fatality. So starting with what is machine learning, first of all. So machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows software applications to be more accurate at predicting outcomes without being explicitly programmed to do so. So with this part, what do you exactly understand? What is machine learning? Um, is anyone here already aware about machine learning? They can please come up and say something. Yeah, I have. Yeah, go ahead, Yash. I've done a few algorithms in it uh, of classification and regression and all those basic things. All right. Okay. So machine learning is nothing but we train our model on uh, like previous data or the existing data and we use it to predict the new output of values uh, when we provided the data set. So it basically works on statistical algorithms. Uh, we it is all about statistics inside machine learning. So moving on towards the different types of machine learning models. So there are four main types of machine learning models, namely supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised, and reinforcement learning. So what are these models? We look into it in the next slide. So supervised learning. Supervised learning is nothing but classification algorithms, classification regression yeah. algorithms that we use. So there are binary classifiers, multi-class multi classifiers, then we have regression model, we have ensembling. Uh, ensembling is an advanced uh, machine learning concept. We'll look into it soon. Um, then next is unsupervised learning. So moving on with unsupervised learning, we have clustering detection, we have clustering anomaly detection. Then we have association mining, dimensionality reduction. And third one is semi-supervised learning. So as the name suggests, semi-supervised learning is nothing but a mixture of supervised and unsupervised learning. So mixture of supervised and unsupervised learning is, it, it has machine translation, fraud detection, and labeling data. So how, how basically it works is, uh, it, trains on, it trains on a labeled data set, and it also gets trained on unlabeled data set. So it works with both of them very, like, perfectly. And the last one is, Reinforcement learning. So basically reinforcement learning is um, something that we use in robotics. That is the main part, idea of uh, reinforcement learning. So in robotics, we have, let's say, a robot is taught, uh, let's say if there is a wall, 
uh, you might have, you might all of my like all of you might be aware about the vacuum cleaners, the automated vacuum cleaners inside the house. So, um, we in that particular vacuum cleaner, we have this uh, algorithm uh, already trained that uh, let's say if an object uh, comes in front of it, uh, whether it is a chair or a wall or a cat or a dog, whatever, then it will turn the direction and it will start working again. So that is one of the reinforcement learning examples. Then in video game play, let's say um, when you're playing against computers, a computer already has some pre-trained algorithms that let's say uh, whenever a particular human player chooses to move uh, A, then computer knows that he has to move part B. In chess, basically, one of the best example is chess. Next is resources management where uh, all the resources need, needs to be managed, then it is the main application of reinforcement learning. So that was like very brief idea about machine learning and its types. So let's begin with the coding part. Um, I hope uh, you might have got an idea about what machine learning is as of now. And I'll wait for next two minutes for so that everyone can download the data set and create a directory or you can basically clone the repository directly and then we can uh, you know um, work on it and then you guys can create a pull request if you make a better better model than like what i have presented i won't be going into pretty deep because i understand that it is pretty big new concept for you guys so we'll go uh, like you know we'll be briefing about it everything and afterwards you it is your task to you know explore the part and you can actually um create a pull request if you uh, get a better model. Like if you train a good model, which has more accuracy than mine. Great, then uh, I'll give two minutes. Uh, please download the data set, everyone. Okay, so I've added a link for a poll. Uh, I would request everyone to, you know, use that poll so that we can have actually a better idea of what kind of session you guys exactly want. It would be easier for me as well as you to learn about things in this. So let's just create a poll now. Uh, please answer the poll, guys, uh, so we can get an idea of what kind of session you guys want as of now we have five okay seven so basically hands-on code along is where you can code along like you can i'll be coding as well as you guys can uh, start coding with me so we can have get together kind of thing so you know if you guys have any doubt then we can solve it instantly an informatory session would be in which I would just, you know, start uh, explaining about how it goes and we'll, basically I'll be the one who'll be working out things and you just have to sit and you, know, you can look at it. And in code along, definitely as the name suggests, you guys will be coding along with me so that you also get a better idea of what's going on. As of now, we have got 12 votes. So 
uh, 31 is the population. So I think uh, everyone, please answer the poll so that we can continue with further session. Okay, so we've got 15 votes out of which 11 votes want a code along session. That is 73% people are asking for a code along session. So let's start then with code along only. I hope everyone might have cloned the repository because it is very important. I've already added the data set in the notebook file in it. So we can start to work on it. So I think I'll start now. Yeah, someone wanted to say something. Okay, is my screen visible? Yep. Great. So let's start then. First of all, uh, first things first, we'll uh, start with, uh, you know, importing the data set that is data.csv. So for that, uh, we'll first import a few libraries uh, as well. Few of the, you know, the basic libraries that we have already explained in our previous sessions, um, pandas, numpy. So let's start with that then. This is pandas. We use it for data handling. Most of the stuff, most of the data handling stuff is done by pandas. Then uh, for numpy, uh, numpy is used uh, for mathematical calculations and stuff. And then it is matplotlib. Then matplotlib is used, uh, matplotlib and cbound, both of them are used for uh, data visualization. So the main idea of matplotlib is uh, cbound is made up on mat matplotlib, actually. <coughs> Sorry. C bond is entirely made out, out, out of matplotlib. So we'll start with the, this thing. First things first, uh, we'll import the data set. So for importing the data set, let's say data is equal to So this is a function. If you might, like most of you might be aware about this, that uh, Pandas has this function known as pd.read underscore csv. So pd here uh, refers to pandas and underscore csv, read underscore csv means uh, read the csv file and then we provide the location of the file. So for my case, uh, I have the notebook as well as a file in the same directory. So I just uh, basically import it uh, directly and then I'll run the file. I hope everyone is uh, able to catch up, right? Hello. Yep, yep, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Now we can further go on. So if you, as you can see, uh, we have actually got the data set up to us. Like we have got the data frame that includes X, Y. These are the columns. Uh, we'll go on with each and every part. So don't worry. Once you have reached till here, we just go for data dot columns. So this will do nothing, but it will tell us about the columns that we have inside our data, data frame. So the columns are namely X, Y, object ID, INC key, COID key, and so on. So uh, I'll let you know what are these things are uh, specifically as we move on. So we have um, Vehicle count as well. Vehicle count is their collision type, is their person count, how many people were involved, pedestrian count, how many pedestrians were involved, 
injuries uh, were there any serious injuries fatalities so uh, as you might be aware by now that uh, the one the main our target uh, attribute is fatality prediction so the target attribute will be fatality so we we need to predict the fatality for that um let's start then or let's next step so for next step uh, we'll look into the data set we'll uh, actually get an idea about data set what it actually consists of so as soon as you give uh, data dot describe it will uh, you know kind of give you a brief intro about description about of the data set so we have mean uh, standard deviation then um, minimum num value what is what was the minimum value 25 percent of the data 58 percent of the data 75 percent and maximum part of each of the column so you will see all possible uh, numeric columns all the integer or the float columns will be uh, present in this not the um string ones because uh, string columns are not possible to cover in this uh, because they don't have mean or standard deviation So let's move further then. Uh, we'll just go with next thing. Let's get an idea of how many rows do we have exactly. So okay, yeah, we have given the print total rows and then we'll also give okay we'll do it in next step no issues so we have got total number of rows that are two two one three eight nine so we have two like twenty one thousand three hundred eighty nine rows and next thing that we are going to check is um we need to count the values uh, let's say we have this many rows but uh, as you might be aware that data sets also have missing values inside them so we need to keep, take care of those missing values as well so let's just check for missing values that we have inside our data set um, that is severity code uh, it is name of the column severity code is name of the column uh, Okay, uh, just a second. I think it's not completely able to take into this. Severity code might be somewhere here. Yep, as you can see, severity code is there. So we'll move forward with severity code and we'll check about the value counts. And what we are going to give specifically is drop an a is equal to false. So we don't want the uh, you know and a values to get out of this thing so as you can see we have one three seven five nine six as number one denoted as number one so here what it has basically done is severity code as zero one two three and two b so we have a total one two three four five five types of severity code and one of them is an and an and means uh it is a blank value there is no value filled inside that particular part so next thing that we're going to do is we'll just use we'll concatenate the things uh, so that we get an idea of what is the data type of each of the column so pd dot concat concat is a uh, function of of this thing pandas where we actually you know concatenate the uh, this thing concatenate the data things uh, into two different columns uh, as we like so d types data dot is any so what you're taking here is uh, if there is any missing value or the null values then we want the sum of the null values and axis is equal to one is basically used so that it checks for a column axis is equal to one will check for a column and then the keys are the keys is nothing but uh, what we want as the column name when we are basically printing a new data frame so for that what do we want as our new column name so we'll start with uh, let's say data types what data types are there and then next one will be null values 
so as mentioned uh, null values we'll check for null values uh, so that we get an idea of how many null values do we have and how how do we want to sort it we will sort it uh, sort the entire data frame uh, based on the uh, we can sort it basically in either ascending or descending so we'll sort it by null values uh, the main column should be null values null values and then comma we'll put it in ascending order or let's say descending let's put it in descending so ascending equal to false will come into descending order and as soon as we run this function we get a uh, new data frame so each of the column is there and we can see that uh, like data type is object here the data type is float uh, here the data type is integer and same object float and integer that are the three types of data sets that we have and we are checking for null values right now so if you'll see uh pedron uh you know the first one the pedron uh, not grnt uh, that is the name of the column so it is basically about you know that particular column um, is about this thing um what if the pedestrian was uh you know whether the pedestrian was on the right way or not like let's say pedestrian was walking on the footpath or let's say he was walking on a proper lane or not that is the main idea of uh, pedron so we can see that we have around let's say 216197 missing values in that so that is actually pretty big amount of missing values so we cannot afford uh, you know having this kind of uh, attributes in our function because that will do nothing but skew our model and our model will not accept this kind of values so let's do one thing we'll drop all those columns that have more than 50% so the total data set as we know that our total number of rows are uh, 2,21,389 so if any column any column uh, in this data set there are 40 columns so in this any column uh, let's say if it will have more than 50% of missing value so 50% of 221389 uh, is around 1 lakh uh, 11000 or uh, 10000 something 1 lakh 10000 something so if it, it has uh, more than that missing values then it will just directly drop the column without checking uh, whether that it is a proper thing to do or not so dropping the features more than 50% missing values okay so let's start now um so how do we drop basically any column uh, inside numpy uh, using pandas is data dot drop columns okay my bad columns uh, then we just start name the naming the columns that we want to drop so uh, as we can see that uh, we want to drop these few columns uh, that uh, those are you know namely this five col six columns let's say so i just basically start with the first one and then next thing we do is let's check the next name that is this one the second one third one is speeding we take speeding into consideration and speeding is pasted fourth one is in attention ind so let's copy that again and paste it up there and the last one that is except um, no not last one certainly we have two more actually one of them is int key and last one is yep exception calls
Okay, so let's just run this uh, for first part. And actually, let's do one thing. Uh, you know, before running this particular part, we'll also concatenate the data set so that we can see it along. So data dot Starts. Yes, since we have already typed that function before, it is uh, directly showing it to us. And yeah, uh, the important part, guys, don't forget to put in place equal to true. That is very important. Or else uh, the problem might occur is it won't change into uh, change the value in the data set. The values in the data set might remain same. So that is very important. In place is equal to true. Else the data set might not get affected. Then you might get errors later on. So as we can see, we have dropped the columns which have more than 50% of the missing values. And right now we have few columns left. Huh? Um, I hope everyone is able to follow, right? Hello, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Great. So if you're able to follow, then it's good. So next thing is now the main part that is severity or the fatality. So we'll start with the severity prediction. Um, so let's comment this one. Taking the severity code and columns. So right now we'll check for the severity code and its related columns. So let's start with the you know number of columns that we have. So print sum of data, sorry. And then we'll select the column that we need inside it, that is severity. Code. And then equal equals data. So we are nothing but we are checking for the number of call uh, rows that have uh, the num like first type of uh, severity, severity code number one. So we are doing that. Uh, so we will we'll get an idea of how many uh, values are there for number one. So it will go like severity code dot one. So dot will fetch the values inside the table and then my bad. Back at this time. And then we'll put something known as rows matched. So we'll check for the number of rows that we have matched. And then let's create a dictionary kind of thing so that we can have an idea of what we have actually done. So um, let's say if there was a property damage during the accident, that is the number one property damage only collision so the only like in this type of collision which is number one uh, there was only property damage included next is injury collision so where uh, an injury occurred this is the next type of collision and the number goes like two Great. Oh, my bad. Sorry. And let's then print the severity code that matches with our sum of data of severity code. Severity code, yep. Again, the same thing. Right now we are going to apply the lambda function towards the rows so that it can directly, you know, uh, fix the severity kind. Description as we have, we already have the description. So, the description is already a column. And then now we'll apply a lambda function. 
lambda function uh, those of you who know about python they might be aware that uh, lambda functions are already present so we we basically use it to you know increase the pace of work so instead of writing a long code we can just have small code and we can work on it so what we have done here is first we uh, check for the diff like uh, first things in first things first uh, we have checked for the number one first type of severity code number one and then we have checked for the rows that are matching and then we have uh, created a dictionary which has um, property damage only collision and then there is injury collision that has number two and now we are applying the this reference uh, dictionary name reference uh, to the variable x so here x is nothing but the data severity uh, description okay now let's apply and run it oops i think we made an error somewhere i see severity code dot one mm -hmm. i suppose the error should be I just call it with the other phone. Okay, this is pretty much actually. Yes, so we have zero, one, and two, right? Yes, so. Oh, actually, we we do have a zero, one, two, and and unique two B and three is also there. So let's do one thing. Uh, we need to apply a function where uh, we only have uh, the you know severity code as zero, one, and two. Actually, so let's start with that because two B and three will have very less values in it. So we need to uh, drop those uh, rows. So let's just. Oh, we get a column for that. So data of severity code is equal to. Okay, we can actually do in place part. So but never mind, just let's follow that particular um Part of me, so it would be easier for us. Oops, sorry, I've been typing, but uh, my arrow was in place in that this location. Fine, no issues. So we'll work again on this data. So next thing that we want is uh, the column name. So the column name is severity code. Yes. And then uh, is in. So is in is a Python basically in already a Python variable. Like, Function that we already have in built Python function, and then we need to uh, declare the values that uh, we don't actually, you know, want. So let's say uh, if we choose, if we don't want a uh, two B and the number three third type of the uh, severity, then we need to drop it. So for dropping it, uh, we'll have to declare the values in a list before that. So let's say 
list underscore i'm using the underscore please uh, keep that in mind if you uh, directly put list then uh, it it won't allow you it will throw an error syntax error because list is not a value proper value so so now we we'll have to look into the values that we want to drop that is number 2b number 3 and and n so for dropping those values we'll have to declare them inside the list okay uh i hope you guys are able to follow along right hello hello am i audible guys yes great so uh you guys are able to follow along the session right or uh, is the pace bit fast or slow please let me know so that uh, i can adapt accordingly mm -hmm. okay no response. no issues <laughs> never mind so let's do next thing so we'll just put the values inside the list uh, that we have right now so instead of this we can actually since it is just a value we can put uh, okay it's an object right data type is object as we can see so we need to put it inside the arrows only so let's move on to that particular part so we don't want zero oops sorry yeah. b and number 3 and last but not the least also and 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 we pass the list here so that uh, we can drop the values or uh, the columns that have those values that is list underscore we will give it as false so that uh, let's say whatever value is in here we don't want it inside our data set again so okay what are the differences columns must be same length as key oh okay what error what error guys i feel this is you should look <laughs> okay uh let's see this error why is it okay so it says that columns must have same length as the key so it is a value error basically so for that we must actually you know take into consideration uh, the duplicated columns that we have so we need to apply again uh, either a lambda function or we can put it to numeric actually if you don't want to do that so let's say if there is duplicated column name then there might be an issue with this part so we can basically just remove this thing let's remove it and we we'll look one more new technique so that is data of data dot severity code and then this time we won't be doing this we will be doing is not equal to the list underscore okay uh, i think this shouldn't be the error but because of some some reason it is uh, throwing an error at us so basically what i basically what this function does is uh, it will actually look into the severity code and whatever the values are present here if those values match the uh, so we have given not equals okay uh, keep that in mind not equals to the list so whatever value let's say if it will be zero then it is if it is in the list uh, and we get the same value then it won't put the zero into the new data frame it will directly kick it out so let's say i'll explain it to you with shorter part let's say zero is the thing that we have so uh it has a 
I don't know why it is throwing this error again and again. Damn it. This should actually work, but because the, I think there might be some duplicated values. Let's just do one thing. We'll uh, actually debug the code. Let's debug it. So for debugging, uh, debugging, what we are doing is basically we we know what the error is. Uh, it says the key uh, same length as key. Columns must not have same length as key. So uh, apparently this error uh, tends to do what it tends to do is uh, we have a duplicated column. Let's say so we need to identify what column is exactly duplicated. So columns dot duplicated. equals so what this will do is uh, it will check for the column and it will draw or tell us the print the name of the columns that are duplicated so since we are not getting any index value that is duplicated so there might be some other reason for this error but basically the main idea of this error is that uh, if there is any duplicate columns then it will print the duplicate columns but it is not printing the duplicate column actually so I think there is something else that is bothering this thing. Okay. Error is in line number three. Sorry guys, uh, actually there was a power loss, so my router just went for a restart and it took some time to join me back, my bad. Okay, so let's continue with the session. Sorry for interruption. So the main, um, let's, let's say we have this issue now. So to resolve that issue, we need to use now actually another method. So we'll again try to use that method now. Since we know that we don't have any duplicated column, then let's do just one thing. Data dot Is it able to print it? Yes. Let's count the values, uh, let's say. So uh, we know that uh, there is three, three B zero and an N value, right? So let's put drop N equals two. So if we put drop N equals to two, then our N value is already dropped out. So next thing that we'll do is uh, in the next column, um, because of N values, I think we were getting that error. If I'm not wrong, Let's see, we'll get to that point. So next thing we'll do is, we need to apply uh, two numeric thing. I think because 
that might also be an issue. But uh, let's just try it before running, coming to any uh, conclusion. So data dot severity for is equal to So we'll put this uh, list underscore since uh, we have to declare the list again as well. Okay, fine, no issues. So let's declare the list again. Zero to B and three. Yep. And let's just search it up on Stack Overflow since we are not able to figure out what the error is exactly. So Stack Overflow says we need to apply numeric function according to this. So let's try that as well. Uh, but I don't think uh, numeric function is the issue here. Let's try that. Severity code dot apply. CD dot two numeric. If I'm not wrong, that is the function. Yeah. And see, that is the error. So I think there is some issue with uh, this thing, the variables part. So let's do one thing. Uh, we'll actually, you know, drop the variables directly using pandas itself. So let's do that first. We'll drop it using pandas anyways, because now uh, it is taking too much of our time. Let's do that. So next thing is data dot so not equals to one particular column that is number that is number three. Why is it throwing error again and again? Come on. Let's just skip this part as of now, guys. Uh, I think it is taking a lot of time. We'll come back to it later on. So move, let's move on to C1. So we'll just uh, start with visualizing of the data set. So style is equal to whatever style you uh, you guys might like. So there are basically few styles. Uh, I like dark grid personally. So we'll go with dark grid. And we have set the style now. So next thing is we'll uh, plot the data. We'll plot a graph for it. So on plot, and we need to declare the x axis, y axis. So for y, we'll uh, go for junction type. What kind of junction it was? Junction type, and then next for u, u is nothing but uh, x axis. So for u, what do we want? Is uh, we want the severity code, as we know. Severity code. So right now uh, the data might be a little bit skewed since we are not able to drop those values, uh, and I and it is taking a lot of time for us. So ax dot set underscore x tick labels. We'll put the labels so that uh, we 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 know that what exactly it is. Get labels and then would be 90 degrees so that we have a graph that is in a horizontal manner rather than the vertical part because uh, it will be a pretty long graph so for vertical the graph would be uh, actually very big to you know visualize properly so and then legend legend is a location that we want where do we need a legend to be uh, I think all of you might be aware of what legend is uh, it is nothing something uh, you know 
where we name what columns and what exactly what is the data about. Uh, you'll get an idea very soon. So this is the legend there, uh, 0, 1, 2, 2, B, 3. So ramp junction and unknown, these were the values that where we had nothing to do. I'll put it in a new page so that expand the image. So I think now it might be uh, more clearer to you that the first type, the severity code one was uh, in abundance. The severity code was zero was uh, lesser than that. And number two was also the second highest uh, for severity code. And two B and three are almost negligible. So that is the reason we were trying to drop the zero, two B and three so that we don't have to bother about it. But uh, since we are not able to mess with it right now, let's move on for that part. So next thing, uh, we'll again now check for the lighting condition, whether it was a daytime or a night time for the, so I think count plot, whereby will be lighting condition that we have in the data set. And then the U will be the record and the data is data. Now, again, we need to select, set the X tick labels to 90 degree again, so that uh, we can have a better view. And again, the legend will be on the lower right itself and plot show. So as, as you might be able to see that uh, it was dark and when the street lights were on, the first type of severity was present. And when it was dark and uh, street lights were on, the second type is also there. The main idea is during the daylight, there were maximum accidents present. So that is what we get an idea about. And then uh, we have dark and no street lights, which had very few accidents there. Dark and street lights off. Street lights were present, but basically they were off. So this is that area and this is the dusk part. So you might be aware about dusk and dawn. Um, so next part is uh, we'll check the weather. What was the type of the weather during the accident when the accident took place? Y is equal to weather. Oops, my bad. And then the same thing, U will be severity code itself. Data will be data and x dot set labels 90 again plt dot layer lower right plt dot show so now we'll get an idea about uh, what is the basic weather condition what was the weather condition during the accident took place so maximum accidents were uh, during clear weather and the second highest accidents that took place were in rainy season for type a and the third was overcast and then we have unknown, unknown is nothing but where the weather condition was not known during the time of the accident. Now let's look at the road condition. What was the road condition during uh, accident to, when accident took place? So road condition, PLT, my bad, okay, yep. PLT dot legend, lower right and PLT dot show. So when road condition was dry, again, the maximum accidents, but when it was wet, the severity case one was pretty low, actually. We'll also get to that part next. And we'll check for the collision type once. So I'll just copy this again and we'll directly, you know, change the collision type. So what type of collision did it take place? So here there are different types of collision parts. So side swipe, so the side swipe is nothing but where a vehicle was swiped from the side. Then a park car, the collision was uh, taken place with the park car, like a moving car, you know, bumped into the park car. Then rear ended, rear ended is nothing but the rear uh, end of your car. Actually, you someone rammed into the rear end of the car. Then we have angles at particular angles, let's say then cycles were hit during the accident or the left, during the left and this took place or uh, pedestrian was the collision part, right and like during the right and the accident took place, the 
head on excellence like the face to face one and then uh, now the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to actually map the values properly for data pre processing so let's start with y and n need to be mapped so here y and n is nothing but yes or no to 1 and 0 1 and 0 because uh, soon we'll be you know splitting the data set into train test split so we need to mark those as y and 0 as 0 and 1 so let's just visualize that uh, what we have right now on our plate. Oh, oops, sorry. Oh, okay, this is supposed to be equals. Sorry for that. Yes, so we have a graph now. Uh, this is the fourth, fifth, actually sixth graph that we have. So you might be aware that N and Y, uh, those are, we cannot use those in actually, you know, prediction part because the machine learning uh, in machine learning the basic idea is it only learns about the in computer binary values that is zero and one so we cannot use that now let's check for the address type like what at what place exactly the accident took place so So as we can see that uh, most of the accidents took place at the block, then comes the intersections. Basically intersection is nothing but a crossroad and then LA had almost negligible of type one collision severity. And then we'll convert the values into IND. So since all of them are string values, uh, we need to convert them into IND integer that is and what does going INT part of data is processing after train test split. data of st underscore call code that is one of our column dot unique we'll check for the values inside that particular column so we have uh, actually many unique values so let's just plot those the person count along with person count actually so let's see how many people were involved in the accident data of Um, label we are putting the label and that is fraction of data and then vld dot show hmm. So as we can see that uh, we have pretty big value actually at one particular part. Let's just visualize the graph better. So let's say around uh, five, two or three, we have a pretty actually very big, you know, sharp steep. That is for about 1.6. The fraction of data was about 1.6. So we know that uh, the number of person count was very high two to three were the number of person count that is the maximum involved during the accident 
So next part is we'll again check for the pedestrian counts there. How many pedestrians were there? So on an average, there were uh, in So in severity code zero, uh, let's say pedestrian zero pedestrians were involved. Uh, that is a maximum severity. Most of the accidents took place and none of the pedestrians were involved. Only in few, that is in number two and almost two B, uh, few one of the pedestrian was involved. Else, no, not more than one pedestrians were involved in our case for any accident. Now let's say a pedestrian and a cycle count. So we we'll check for pedestrian and cycle count. So pedestrian and cycle count are checking for right now. And we have seen the data. Let's check it further. So um, it has the same trend to that of pedestrian counts. Uh, this is the pedestrian count and this is the cycle count. We can see that uh, only number second type of severity was present for with one pedestrian cycle count. So moving on to the vehicle count how many vehicles were involved in the accident so we'll again paste the values and we'll check for what how many vehicles were involved so to check with the vehicle count was actually very at like two two vehicles when two vehicles were present the maximum accident took place with two vehicles were present in it and then for zero severity code zero the maximum uh Accidents took place when it was uh, at zero. No vehicles were present at all. So let's move on further. Now we'll check the status, uh, status and the severity code of the accident. So let's see, matched and unmatched. So here we are checking for whether we uh, the police records. Actually, this is a Seattle police record. Too. So whether the police records. Had those uh, present in that you know records or not? So let's, as we can see that most of the uh, severity type one were present, they were matched, and also number two, but unmatched were uh, for severity zero and a little bit of two and two B as well, and one of uh, some of them for number one as well. So let's say a driver hit a parked car. So let's check for that as well. So Oh, we see uh, most of them are as N. N means no, the park car was not hit. So maximum in most of the accidents, the park car was not involved. Uh, in very few of them, the parked cars were involved. So uh, enough with this part. Uh, I think now we should move on to the next portion. That is, we'll drop the columns that are not useful for us for training the data machine learning model. So drop the columns which are not useful for training model training and the columns that we're going to drop is let's name them drop underscore calls severity code because as we have seen that severity code is not really useful then we have severity description And then next thing that is, it's dot columns. So we have a call number. Uh, it is the number of, you know, ISR presence that is not actually useful. And then the X axis and the Y axis, that is the location of the place where the accident took place. So again, uh, that is also a useless part. And then next is state code. Yes. So whether the car had yes or not, then next part comes. So what I'll do is actually, you know, I'll paste all the location, everything itself, like very quick, because it uh, it will take a lot of time to you know drop this one by one.
will also drop the dates because uh, date will not help us. Neither will the report number help us. Then comes the old at key. And then comes and objected object ID. Sorry. So here the object ID that was involved in the accident that is also not useful and the status of the accident, uh, whether the case is yet solved or not, whatever it is. So we don't want those values and drop. Columns, we'll name the column, then in place equals true, and then we'll check for data dot. And actually here we need to only drop uh, security code uh, number one, that is type one only. Same error, I think. Yes, security code one not found. Okay, no issues. Let's just drop. I see. So we just do one thing. Uh, actually, we'll get severity code back because it might be helpful later on. I just realized for that part. And what can be done for that is we'll just directly we'll run rerun this part. So we'll read on the few next few parts. Great. Now we can uh, move back to the that particular portion where we don't actually need to drop the severity code, and we'll remove the severity code from here. And then yes, so we have the severity code with us. Next things next, uh, we'll again concatenate and we'll check for the null values uh, with the rest of the columns that we have. So again, I've already copied it with me. So I'll just think about pasting it together and I'll print the values. So we have now around 26,000 columns and stuff. So no issues with that. Let's just Move on to next part that is data by data x. So here the data by is nothing but uh, the part where that is our target that is severity code and data x. Data x is rest of the columns that we have um, and after dropping the target column. Now we'll use the train test split from uh, scikit-learn. So scikit-learn is a machine learning library guys. So we'll just do sklearn.model selection import train test split. Now x underscore train comma x underscore test and we have a function with us. Test size, let's make it actually a bit larger so that we have 70% of training data and 30% of the testing data. And we'll split, I think, the part. Yes. Now let's do pd dot options dot mode. We are using the chained assignment mode to none. We are setting it to none. And now x underscore train under INFL that we have already used above under INFL. We have declared it uh, like above in the part. So x train of under IF apply lambda function. So we are going to apply a lambda function here. So for the lambda function, what we are going to do is lambda of x, let's say. And if there is n, we'll replace, as I have mentioned before, that if there is x, then we'll uh, replace it uh, with 0. And if there is y, we'll replace it with um, 1. So let's do that. x equals equals 0. OK, uh, here the x should be small, actually. Else, if it is y and x value that is equal to 1, then uh, we do else is equal to else x only. We are not going to change it. So moving on further, next part, what we are doing here is 
we'll check for x trend we'll go to x and let's go trend under infl okay x should be larger here yes under infl dot value count so um for the value count we'll now we'll see whether how many n were there and how many pi were there so for n there were one that is 1 like 29920 nodes were there and 6723 pi yes were there so we have sorted that into 0 and 1 now so no need to worry about that now let's import a math library uh, that is import math and then we'll draw, apply a few math functions along with uh, this part so x train and then next will be x train and st underscore call code and then next part is again we need to change it so we are applying lambda function that is using uh, numpy and math both of them so first we'll use the numpy library so let's apply numpy np dot nn if there is any n value then what we need to do is uh we'll just put this space as empty and else we'll just put uh, consider it as an integer that is it and next part is if is in is in is in is as i've told is in stunts or is in are the input functions by python itself so is in stunts x comma str let's say it is a string uh then else x and now we'll again check for the unique value so that uh, we make sure that uh, we don't have actually false values in it yes yeah, so we haven't missed out any values so moving on with the next part that is train part train is equal to pd dot concat x train y train and x is equal to 1 that is very correct so we have concatenated both the x train and y train so now we can actually plot it out total distribution of training data and then we'll uh, yes and then we'll print the total distribution of how we have distributed the training data that is Train of severity code because uh, if you know that we have already concatenated the y train as well, so severity code is present in there. Dot value underscore counts, and then we'll just leave one line. So instead of actually, you know, yep. And next thing is. total missing data that we have is total distribution of missing missing data we are planning to draw and then next we'll just uh, put it put up there and we'll print the values for that so print train and then again train uh, that is we we'll grab the same column again train dot is na so we are checking for the missing values is na and if any na value is there then uh, we want it in the column form yes and now we'll uh, basically the next thing that we'll let's just print it as of now so you might be able, like you can see that we have the distribution in delhi in our hands and also all the values are displayed to us so uh, we need to drop the missing value rows as well so i'll just directly paste it instead of typing uh, from we have already done this before so we are dropping all the values and then boom we don't have any null values present with us so all the null values are zero now so we can move forward with the pre processing part or the data x and y 
so that is again x train y train and revaluation re re of the values and moving on further um we'll feature it into different categories okay so we have a uh, different categories a few categories are there uh, it is since i've mentioned that it has a lot of uh, data sets so let's just mention it as uh, we have sag lane key what lane the car was in the crosswalk whether the crosswalk accident occurred during the pedestrian was on a crosswalk and so on so we have put the features and training categories uh, we have split into it and then uh, let's say if hit uh, if we have hit a park car then um, we'll directly go forward with that so one or zero everything so basically everywhere we are changing the y to one and basically n to zero now it is time for one hot encoding so instead of using the one hot uh, like instead of actually using the circuit lens one hot encoding because it is very complex for uh, beginner to understand so we'll uh, define our own uh, one hot encoding function so one hot encodings is equal to uh, as of now let's leave it empty and then one underscore hot circuit lens has this inbuilt if you are aware about circuit lens then uh, this would be very useful for you guys actually and let's declare a global variable that uh, so that uh, we can use it later on as well so uh, global variable over encoding that is fine good name no issues column column in columns and then we have dummy column that is pd dot get underscore dummies so basically it will get the dummy values whatever present so column and prefix will also be column yes and next part uh, let's say if the values are unknown or it is in other as we have seen uh, before in the graphs or the plots that we had there were lots of values that were unknown basically classified as unknown uh, we'll just see it yep so let's say we have other here so we don't know what other is exactly so it won't help us in the training of data and also the unknown part so it, it is of no use so what we we'll do is we'll basically directly dump it out we'll remove the part so we'll remove it directly from there so we don't want it in our data so i'll just copy that portion a bit and i'll paste it here itself so all we have done is we are removing the un unknown and other part uh, i'll paste it in the chat as well if someone needs to you know copy it as it is great i have uh, given in the chat as well that particular portion that i have copy pasted and then next thing is return the data frame so we have defined our one hot encoding function and then we are basically using uh, feature hashing so that we have uh, you know high cardinality high cardinality nominal function features that with us so feature hashing for high cardinality features yes high cardinality nominal features hashing underscore dict dictionary let's declare a hashing dictionary and now we have from copy import git copy so this is nothing but a new like like that it's just a simple library for hashing and scalar dot feature underscore extraction import feature hash it so we'll just hash it further so next thing is i'll again copy paste the function because it is very big and we don't want to waste our time on writing functions i'll explain it to you uh, the function so feature hasher is not nothing but where we actually you know uh, hash the features for us so that it is easier for a machine learning model to understand and we'll run this and now next check our training our x train so now
now we have a proper data. Everything is in form of zeros and ones. So next part is we'll add one hot encode and uh, we'll also use a feature hashing together on the few columns. And then as soon as we use that, all the uh, unknown values and stuff will go away. As you can see now we have 0, 0.000 and everything. So we don't have any uh, useless values now with us. So now let's drop the least important features again. So, okay. Mm. So we have to actually declare that part, less important part. So let's declare it. So what we'll do is a random forest classifier we are going to use and we are going to run it with a less important features. So what we have done here is uh, we have declared a new data frame with the less important feature, which is features and their importance level uh, that we have already. And now we'll check for the importance level and we, the, those who have low values, uh, they will be appended into the column. And finally, we will have less important named uh, data frame. And what we are doing next is uh, in that particular data frame, um, we'll be dropping out those values. Uh, actually, those have almost negligible in, uh, importance with us. And then we'll also uh, actually let's uh, fill that by the time this thing runs, we'll also create a correlation since it has run. Uh, so there are 192 features which were useless for us. So we have dropped those. So now let's uh, plot a correlation plot, correlation plot SNS dot heat map. So heat map and then the next thing is correlation CURR that we have already declared and we min. So it is nothing but we are describing the size V min, V max, and center, yes. So we'll also do next thing. Uh, let's say we need to find the uh, features that have actually the maximum highest correlation. So as you can see towards the one, it will become lighter. The uh, darker means zero percent correlation. And uh, if it is negative, then uh, it will be very light. So for negative, let's say negative correlation. Negative correlation means it is inversely proportional to the uh, product. So we'll do one thing. We'll import iter tools that is for iterating. Uh, it is again Python, inbuilt uh, in Python. So for i comma j in Alter tools dot combination and we are going to again go through the columns of the correlation and we'll check for two like two variables at a time and if abs abs is nothing but absolute absolute value of correlation log i comma j it is greater than 0.9 which is 90 percent if the correlation is greater than 90 percent then only we need to print it as we don't need the variable so as we can see there are very few variables that have uh, actually very good correlation with each other so we will just take those correlations and we'll actually drop those because it might affect the training of a model highly correlated features x underscore train dot drop again we'll have to name the columns so Let's not waste the time on writing the column names. We'll directly drop it off. So, okay, oops. I think this is the error. Yes, now I suppose it should work. We'll put a back slash. S dot underscore 24 not found. I see it is present here. Then why did I not find it? Oh, okay. Sorry. It should be point zero. Yes, point zero. So next thing we'll check uh, for the score of our model from SQLN model selection. We'll import cross well predict and cross well predict as well as cross well score yes and now we'll import a new uh, we'll get a new uh, actually classifier function that is xg boost 
So HC Boost has imported a classifier. Then next we'll uh, get the accuracy metrics that are all possible metrics that we have. And moving further, let's declare the functions. All the like basic all the models that we need. That is random forest classifier with n estimators. We don't need n estimators. We only need the random state. So we'll remove all those useless part. Yes. And then next thing will be train underscore predicted. So let's say what is predicted. We'll check for the cross validation accuracy. So cross validation predict the uh, X train and Y train based on and CV is equal to cross validation fold. How many folds do we want it to make? So that is the number of folds and accuracy is equal to accuracy score and x train and train predicted again and let's print um, model name that is random forest now let's print the accuracy of the model so accuracy so as you might be aware, if we want to print something inside this, then we need to use a little bit of C kind of uh, notation that is 0.2 F that is up till the two after two digits after the point. And we'll also actually accuracy into 100 and percentage that is nothing but we are taking out the values uh, directly by absolutely running it. And then we'll print a report for us. So report is nothing but it will tell us about the variables and stuff. I mean, what exactly, what, how much recall score and how much validation score and everything that we have achieved. So let's create a classification report for us now. So let's wait for it. Afterwards, we just need to change the name from uh, random forest to XGBoost. I'll prepare it uh, right now itself. So let me, so we can directly copy paste it. Random forest is actually a heavy classifier. So it might take some time to run. So don't worry about it. It, it will take some time to run because it uh, has to go through different trees. And since we have selected random state 42, so it will take considerable amount of time. Oops, I think classification report we have haven't imported, I think. Yes, we were supposed to import it. Sorry. All right. Classification report. Uh, let's import few more things. ROC AOC score, then ROC curve. Yes. Now, and let's print it. We'll also print the XG boots part as well after this. So as soon as uh, random forest is completed, we'll run the XG boost function. And meanwhile, we'll uh, I'll also prepare the next part that is keep it typed itself. So we'll be using under sampling and over sampling using S mode function, which is very important. 
So undersampling is nothing but when your data set is skewed, as I mentioned before, our data set is pretty skewed. Uh, so we'll look into that. Okay, we have the result with us. So as we can see, the accuracy is almost 99.965% because of the random forest classifier that we are using. Random forest classifier, as I mentioned before, it goes through different versions of the tree and it will take the best version, like best part from each of the tree and it will uh, put it together. So we have almost got accuracy of one and macro average is 0.95. So it is actually a very good model, random forest classifier for us right now. And next part we'll see is uh, for XGBoost classifier. So let's see, wait for XGBoost to complete. And meanwhile, I've also done the next part where we'll be removing the oversampling and imbalance part of the data set, the skewedness. So we'll remove the skewedness also. So this might take around the same time as that of random forest classifier maybe. Meanwhile, I'll paste it. So we have used as mode here. As mode is nothing but uh, we use it for uh, we use as mode for actually balancing the imbalanced data set. That is the main idea of as mode. And stratified k fold is we are folding the data set so that uh, folding the model so we can achieve a bit more accuracy over the test part. So let's wait a bit more for the XG boost. I think it is taking some time. Let it run by the time we'll 
also look at the grid search cv so grid search cv is nothing but a machine learning uh, part where we actually you know create a grid and then we use the classifier that we have already and we use different parameters and different weights for each of the part so we'll also run the search cv meanwhile let's just wait i think it's taking a lot of time I will go with further grid search CV parameters that we have. So we have done nothing but we've copy pasted the same thing, but uh, here we have changed the parameter to different parameter number three, parameter test three, which is this. And again, the same thing with parameter test four. I think it is taking some time. Let's wait for it for a few minutes. Okay, finally, I think XGBoost has come up with 100% accuracy, which is very good actually. Uh, because XGBoost is right now the best particular classifier in market that is available. Either you can use light GBM or the XGBoost, um, which are the like market leading in machine learning. Okay, S mode fit sample. Uh, I think there is an issue with this. Uh, yeah, just give me a second. Line number 18, right? So it should go like separate sample, I think. That was the problem. And running further. All of them are exibus, so you can actually think of it that okay, definitely it is going to take some time for us to run this. Program. So let's wait a few more minutes so that we can actually, uh, you know, see that whether the part is running or not. Uh, I mean, it is running, but it is taking some time uh, because of a very heavy algorithm that is a uh, stratified K-fold, which is running on, you know, around 43 columns or 43 features that we have.
So I think this will take some time because as we can see that our previous algorithm took around seven minutes and 55.6 seconds uh, and it came out with almost 100% of accuracy. So let's wait for a few more minutes because it is s mode and s mode uh, is actually, uh, you know, pretty good uh, when it comes to imbalanced data set. It will remove the imbalanced data set and uh, we'll actually have a better model and a more uh, better training data as compared to what we had previously. It will remove the imbalance part. So what it does is basically there is this feature known as oversampling from s mode. IMB learn, so uh, from which we imported the S mode. So IMB learn will uh, nothing but the oversampling part will do is uh, it will the, let's say uh, there are two particular samples, one which has no and one which has yes. So the yes part uh, it will remove uh, like let's say there are 400 for the yes and 100 only for no or let's say 50 for no. So it will balance the data set by you know adding more number of no's and removing the yes part. So it would be better. So let's just wait for a few minutes and let our algorithm run. It's around two minutes only. So we'll have to wait, I think, because seven minutes was the previous one. So this might take around the same time. Meanwhile, we have also completed the rest of the parameters, different parameters. And yes, definitely, if you guys find out a better model, uh, then uh, please feel free to, you know, actually, uh, create a pull request on our github repository yes uh, someone had any doubt okay no issues so let's just wait and yes if uh, i was on the part of uh, if you have a better model if you find out that uh, you you have found a more accurate model then you please feel free to you know create a pull request on our github repository and we would be very happy to welcome you or uh, you can also um, drop any doubts that you have around i think most of you might have uh, done till the part till uh, i have reached so let's just wait for the time let's see how much time more it takes it's almost three minutes right now. We need to wait for a few more minutes, I think. After that, I'll actually, you know, what I can do is I'll uh, stop this particular part because uh, spending eight, eight minutes on each of the part is very actually time consuming. So what we can do is we, we can directly run to the feature hashing part and we can get, you know, directly plot the graph for our accuracy score and the training examples. So we'll directly put and check for the training curve. So let's just wait and see. Let's just, it's four minutes yet. Let's wait for a few more minutes, I think, and then we'll be good to go. Let's take a quick recap of what we have done till now, guys. Uh, meanwhile, the model is running. So for the recap portion, uh, from the start, we have almost done many things. Uh, I'll give you a quick recap of everything. So starting with the plots that we have done, so I'll just show the plot right now here itself that we have already produced. So we check whether the uh, when the accident took place, what kind of junction it was. Then the next thing that we checked was the lighting condition when the accident uh, were taken place. And 
next thing was the weather condition uh, what kind of weather uh, it is and how accidents are there and then next is road condition for the weather whether it was a wet road or a dry road or let's say snow was there ice was there and then we have collision type uh, what kind of collision uh, will take place uh, we have under infl uh, that is either it was yes or no and next is we have address type that it, whether it was a block or it was a intersection that is crossroads next is the person count or fraction of data that a uh, maximum two to three people were involved in each of the accident not more than that uh, that is a maximum fraction and maximum i think around 10 people were involved no not even 10 around eight and then we have pedestrian count so in most of the cases no pedestrians were involved in the accidents only in few of the cases uh, pedestrians were involved and next thing is we have um, cycle count uh, if let's say there was a cycle involved pedestrian cycle bicycler uh, who was involved in the accident so that is also not an issue for us uh, that was not the case and then the vehicle count so at most we have found that two vehicles was the maximum probability if a uh, crash took place then it was for two vehicles together and that is for the first type of severity condition and in many cases four but not more than four uh, vehicles were involved in any accident in our data set and then we have unmatched and matched whether it matched with the police records or not so there were few of them that were not matching with the police records and then next thing that we did is um, we actually checked uh, dropped all the columns that were not uh, helpful for our model so we have dropped the location x axis and y axis on the map those were not actually very important for us because uh, and report number let's say what report number it was for police and what is the status whether the case is still pending or uh, it is completed so that was not helpful for machine learning model to predict so we have dropped those columns and next part what we have done is uh, we have concatenated the data with the null types so data types is object float and integer that are the three data types that we have maximum and the null values in each of the attributes so since we have around 2.5 lakh of uh, values so there uh, it is obvious that we might have a few null values as well so we have 26500 null values with us so um we have actually you know uh, next thing that we did is uh, we have split the data into a y and x so y is nothing but our target variable that is a severity or the fatality of the accident and the x is our um x is our rest of the data uh, excluding the target variable so excluding this rest all of the columns are our x uh, data x and then we have split it into uh, test size 30 0.3 as i explained before that it is 30 uh, percent actually 70-30% split, so 70% will be the training data and 30% will be the testing data. So, and random state 42. So, the main reason why we chose random state 42 is uh, there are very few random states which uh, give actually more accuracy as compared to the other random states. So, 0, random state 0, random state 1, random state 2, and random state 12, and random state 42, and also 20. These are the five random states that provide more accuracy than the rest of other random states that we have and next is we have imported a math function and for that math function we have applied a lambda function so we can actually convert all the string values into integers and then next thing is uh, again uh, we have dropped the missing values from our data and after dropping the missing values from the data as we can see again the null uh, null sum is zero so no missing values were present now in our data we have dropped all of those uh, in case, as I explained before as well, that uh, if we have, let's say, less amount of uh, data, we don't have a huge amount of data with us. Uh, it, since we have a big amount right now, we have 2.5 lakh, so we, we can afford to drop around 25,000 data, so that is not an issue. But when we have a small amount of data, that is, let's say, 1,000 or 10,000 data, so we cannot drop, uh, you know, uh, that much amount of data set. So what we need to do is we either need to refill it uh, using a mean or a mode or median uh, statistical, you know, calculation methods so that uh, our model is better to be trained because uh, less data means less accuracy for our model. 
it cannot apply statistical methods on the more like less data so it needs a more amount of data so it's better that we don't drop the data when we have less amount of data with us then next is preparing for the x and y for modeling so again what we are doing here is uh, we are splitting it into the different categories of the values so we have split the data in the different categories and then if uh, if y means yes and n means no so as i explained so if hit car was parked y means yes and n means no so if it is y then we'll uh, replace it with one else if it is not y then we'll replace it with zero so one and zero we have used and we have uh, as i mentioned that we can use a uh, scikit lens one hot encoding but it would be very complex for a beginner to understand so we are uh, defining our own uh, one hot encoding function as of now which is only for the unknown and the other variables that we have in our data and we have also hash used the hashing for high cardinality nominal features so that we can get more better actually um count when it comes to the data set so now as you can see all the y and n were converted to zeros and ones so next point is uh, we'll have to apply these functions or the one hot encoding and feature uh, hashing as soon as we apply it uh, you you might be uh, you, you might be able to see that we have uh, created different columns as crosswalk key 25 crosswalk key 26 and so on so these are the crosswalk keys different and it will convert it will be changed to one only and only if uh, that particular crosswalk key is present so we are uh, now checking the importance of the features if the feature is important for us then we'll keep it else we'll drop the feature so these all features were not important uh, so we have dropped those features because they were not at all present in our data so we have dropped those and after that we have uh, used a correlation or uh, sns heat map for checking the correlation and we got the correlation since it is uh, pretty big uh, actually so we'll see it in a new form but uh, it is still uh, very complex to understand since there are lots of values in it so what we can do is we can directly create a function of correlation and we can which is cor and we can import it further and uh, we can check for two attributes any two attributes and each of the two attributes i mean but um, it can be any of these two so uh, we are checking for the absolute value if uh, correlation is uh, greater than 90 percent which means it is highly correlated then we are dropping those so we directly drop those values and then we have used xgboost classifier and the random forest classifier so for random forest we have got 100 almost 99.96 percent accuracy and for xgboost we got 100 percent accuracy which is very good actually and right now we are working on uh, k fold stratified k fold so basically here n splits is equal to 10 so what it will do is it will uh, split the data set into 10 different parts and for each of the part it will use the s mode algorithm and that s mode algorithm will actually balance the data set so let's wait a few more minutes i think uh, some of the issue might be with my uh, system as well uh, maybe my system is a low spec one so it might take some more time uh, to run it but definitely those of you who are using Google Colab or uh, Colab notebooks or let's say Kaggle notebooks, uh, it would be pretty helpful for you guys because uh, they provide more CPU usage. The main idea why we didn't use, uh, why I did not use it uh, is uh, that it actually creates a lot of issue with different platforms. So let's say if I'm using a Google Colab and uh, some other user is using a Kaggle notebook, then uh, both the functions might be different. So it might throw an error. So let's just wait for a few more minutes. I think this will be enough. So that is the pretty much idea of our models. So after that, we are just definitely, we are trying different parameters as I explained before as well. We are trying different parameters for us. And as soon as the parameters is done and we'll check for the learning curve that how much, like how good is our model in learning different data. So let's wait for a few more minutes. We can end. I see most of the like population, uh, like most of the people have left the meeting because you know it. It actually takes a lot of time when it comes to hands-on and code along session. I mentioned it before as well, and it's almost one, and we started at eleven. So yes, definitely two hours it took for us to complete this session.
I hope you get the results for this part. Let's just see how much more time it takes. I think we have four minutes more and we'll come to an end after this. It's been 18 minutes. Let's wait few more minutes, I think. Till then, if anyone has any doubts, they can ask. If no doubts, then it's fine. Uh, if you have any doubt regarding the data set or anything, then we can surely answer it. Sorry guys, I don't know there is some issue. It is just actually stopping it again and again. Yeah, so the part is actually Janki Raman, I think if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, then um, the issue is uh, for machine learning, you need a GPU. Uh, if you have a GPU, then it would be very easy for you to run machine learning models. So it's better to have a GPU uh, rather than you know using our own CPU system. So GPU is basically graphical processing unit which is very faster at calculations than what cpu can do so as we can see that we have got different uh, parameters that we had run and finally we are able to achieve uh, the learning curve we have got the graph for the learning curve so if you'll see the training score uh, it went for the last uh, few different hyperparameter tuning it went for 0 0.765 up till uh, 0 0.7575 and here uh, the cross validation score has actually increased with the time uh, for more so as i mentioned that uh, more number of uh, training data is equal to more number of accuracy so cross validation score has increased and the functions that we had declared and final accuracy that we were able to achieve is 75 percent 
point, 75.82% and Jacquard's score was 0 0.73. So that is it guys, I think from my side. Uh, if anyone has any doubts, then they can please uh, ask the doubts. I'll be happy to answer. Um, if no one has any doubts, then I think enough can we wind up the session. Hello, Pranav? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we will mark that at the end of the session. So, and I'll to everyone who has attended. Yes, I'll commit the notebook as well. And uh, you can clone the notebook from the GitHub repository of ISABIT. And you can actually, if you want to uh, go for some improvements in the model, then you can definitely, you know, use that thing. Great, then I'll stop sharing my screen. I think everyone has been burned out with such a long session. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys, for showing your interest. Thank you, man.